خیلی خوشحالم که اینجا خدمت شما هستم. As I'm sure you guys all agree, we are all very fortunate to be here. We all had our successes along with our failures, and we've spent tremendous amount of time and effort to get to this point. I consider myself truly fortunate. I have an amazing wife, beautiful children, wonderful parents, brother, family, friends. But I'm really fortunate because I have the opportunity to give a helping hand to others. So 16 years ago, when I was young, full of hair, looking for adventure, back then Maz and I had our last ultimate haircut, this woman, Olivia, asked me to go on a medical mission with her. I was, again, not clueless as to what I was doing, so I said yes, I was looking for an adventure. So she asked me to go to Guatemala. Guatemala is a beautiful country, dangerous, mysterious, volcanic, full of mountains, has 18 million population, 54% of which live in abject poverty. They live in little huts without water or electricity. They have an open fire, for cooking, heat, warmth. They breathe that ash all day. They all have lung disease and they die early. They, being in the center of Americas, they were the center of the Mayan nation and of course the conquistadors. So drama ensued. 36 years of civil war ended in 1996 and they're left with more poverty and about a million people missing. So, Olivia had arranged for us, with the help of an organization called Helps International, to go to a facility, a Bible study center at that point in time, and turn it into a hospital. All these people were waiting at the door for us to help. So we turned this facility into a hospital. Operating rooms, recovery rooms, dental clinics, medical clinics. And we started seeing all sorts of cute people, wonderful people, happy people, with nothing. People with tumors, people with cleft lips, people, whatever. Whatever showed up at the door, we saw. We started operating four rooms, running into the way hours of the night. This was truly what we had imagined as doctors, physicians, nurses, helpers what we wanted to do, work together to help as many people as we could. So the dentist saw over 200 people, close to 300 people. We did surgery to about, on, about 150 people. This little girl, Natty, was, who's 17 years old, had the stature of a 12-year-old because she's malnourished, lived on top of a mountain in a village of 20 people. Right? She had a cleft lip. The Mayans think cleft lip is a curse. So they didn't want her to repair it because the gods had cursed her, right? Lucy, who's a Peace Corps officer, who was assigned to this village for two years to teach the women how to take care of themselves, brought her down when he heard we're there for us to help her. Magical stuff happens over there, right? So we do a lot of good things. Turn cute people even cuter, right? do a lot of surgery, do a lot of good work, help a lot of people, work as hard as we can. The clinic people saw over 1,500 patients in their clinic, gave as much medicine away as they could, worked hard for a week, got in the bus, finally slept, came home feeling like angels, right? And a little embarrassed about our good fortune, about everything we have going on for us, all the opportunity. So since then, I must warn you, giving is very addictive. It's contagious. So I got, I got, I got it, I got the bug. I've been on 25 missions since there with multiple organizations. And I say in every mission we go, we save five, maybe 10 lives. We probably turn away more people who have diseases that we cannot help. We're just not equipped to deal with, right? Which is heartbreaking, turning someone away who you know they're gonna, not gonna live long, right? So when you do the math, we save 150 people, 200 people. Each of these wonderful volunteers pay over 2,000 bucks to come on this mission, right? 
again, doing the math, over the past tw 25 missions, we paid over 5 million bucks to save 200 people, right? <laughs> Outrageous, amazing. But last year, right here in this gala, generous people like you guys donated money to this organization, MAHAC, that saved more lives than all of our gargantuan effort, right, in all these years that we did this work together. Why? We lack infrastructure. Our organization is poor, right? We can't be as effective as we would love to be. Why is that? Mahak is an amazing place. If you have been to Iran, and I've had the chance to go to this hospital, you know what I'm talking about. But if you haven't, please go. This place has no frills. You walk into the lobby, it's not a pretty lobby, but it is a well-oiled machine, not a penny wasted. Everything is there for taking care of kids. Nothing wasted. You walk the hallways, you know it, you feel it. It's clear why, what they're doing. They have single rooms. I've been to hospitals in four different continents. Very few hospitals have single rooms, especially in, in, third, in you know, conditions like you have in Iran. And you can see the facilities are amazing. They're not only there to help the kids, to get them cured, but also to, to make them feel good, feel good about the process that they're in, give them hope that they're gonna get better. So I go on these missions and a lot of generous people like yourself ask me, let me give you money, but they have trepidation, right? Where is this money going to? Who is, who's gonna get this money? So they oftentimes come to me and say, here, let me give you this check. Why don't you take the money yourself and use it when you get there, because they don't trust the organization, right? That's not without merit, you know? So, Mahak, knowing this and trying to allay the fears of everybody who has this kind of trepidation, has subjected itself to evaluation by a, a company called SGS. SGS is based in Geneva. They are the world's leading inspection, verification, testing, and certification company. They look at oil companies, healthcare companies, insurance companies, all industries they assess and certify. So for eight years, Mahak did this, exposed itself, opened their doors, opened their books, and asked them to evaluate. Not only because they wanted to know where they stood, but they wanted to get better. And with this process, you get better. And in doing so, after eight years, they ranked 97.5%, which is the top-ranking charity organization in the world. So only 328 charities expose themselves to this kind of an evaluation. Why? It's difficult. None of the organizations I work for would ever pass muster here. They wouldn't. We have no, we, we don't have any basic infrastructure to be able to pass this, right? So let me show you what SGS looks at. A lot of factors, all these factors. They look at the governance, how the structure of this place is, Mac. They look at the strategy. What are they planning? What is their mission in the long term? The integrity of the people who are running this place. The most important thing in any organization, integrity, right? Financial controls, they look at the books. When the money comes in, where does it go? What, what we all need to know. The outcome measures. I go to Guatemala, I operate on someone, and I never know what happens to them. Did they have a complication? Did they have a good life after what I did? I never know. I never find out. Those, those people drive on a chicken bus for eight hours to get to our mission, and then they're lost forever, right? So we have no idea what we do. So these guys not only do outcome measures, they also check to make sure they're always continuously improving. So putting themselves through SGS is not only to show you guys that they're doing the right thing, but also to allow themselves to improve for a foreign, company to come in and look at them and tell them you're doing this right and you're not doing this part so okay you need to improve that's amazing so what happens of the thousand dollars you give tonight the hundred thousand dollar check you write tonight ninety seven thousand dollars of that goes to helping kids that is an important thing to know now, that's not easy to get to 
The boots on the ground in the U.S. is ISCC. The wonderful women and men who run ISCC here every day, all year long, culminating into this event, the gala, just so that you guys come in here fully aware of this organization, what they do, bringing awareness to MAC, right? They have multiple events, the gala, of course, the bazaar, right? And I'm going to show you a video of the bazaar. And this is Razia, who is one of the people who went through Mahak, survived, got cured, and is now in university studying. And hopefully someday he can contribute to Mahak. She can. Right? They also have a Yalda celebration, the family festival. So all year, these guys are working just to bring awareness, right? And these are events that raise awareness, they raise money. You know, they're not as profitable as what we have here tonight. So what you do here tonight will make the difference, right? They are done so that you guys are aware of what's going on and you can come here and help. So in summary, Mahak is a lean, mean machine, right? They do everything they can to make sure you know that you, your efforts, that your input, your contribution gets to the kids the most important thing that we need to know tonight. And so for people like Rogie, who went through a three-year battle with cancer in Mac, three years she fought, and now she's five years in her mission, smiling, right? So this is, tonight is your opportunity to give hope a chance. Please do that. Thank you.